I've just been to an Aldi in Blackburn, um, just in relation to the masks. Uh, seems to be a lot of fear again now with like, uh, which happened at the start of lockdown in March. Like you sort of feel the atmosphere of fear in there. I spoke to two members of staff wearing masks and both were distressed. One was really sort of uppity with me when I was asking where the cucumbers were. I couldn't understand what his response was. So he made a sarcastic comment. So I started asking him about the mask that he was wearing and he was saying it was an absolute nightmare and he hated it and I said well why are you wearing it the regulations haven't come in yet and he says we have to we've been told we have to I then spoke to the manager because I've got asthma and he said yeah no problem if you got asthma you don't have to wear the um the the mask when you're in the shop when the regulations come in then I spoke to a uh, man at the till who also looked distressed with the mask uh having to use sanitizer every time he uh, had a different customer. Uh, very, again, very difficult to hear what he was saying. So I asked him, you know, uh, how's it working for you wearing the mask for this entire shift? And he said, it's an absolute nightmare. So, you know, uh, I really am genuinely concerned for people's health. So that's my observations on it anyway. Yeah, it's Dean, the cab driver. I just wanted to share this video quickly. Just picked up a passenger, gets in the back of the cab, got a mask on, nice guy. He sort of goes, oh, can, you take this to, uh, can you take this to... I couldn't hear what he was saying, so I said, you have to speak up a little bit. He wanted to go to Oxford Circus. When we got there, he said he, he tried to tell me something else. Can you turn left here? Drop me on the right. I couldn't quite hear him. I said, got having a check very quickly as he got out and pa was paying. Very nice guy. He said, I've got to wear this. This is what the company have asked me to wear. Um, and, and, you know, and I told him my views but not not to be overpowering hopefully this doesn't come across overpowering i respect the views and i respect others i respect human beings i care about human beings I, and all i said to him i said you know i'm, I'm, a, I'm an ex-fitness instructor i'm very interested in the human body the human body is cleverly put together by our creator whoever, whoever put the body together from the skin to the skeletal system to the muscular system, uh, yeah, the muscular system to the the cardiovascular system, you name it, eyes, uh, toenails, eyebrows, air, everything in our body, right from feelings to emotions, has a reason and has a purpose. So my, my point to him was, you know, and this is, wasn't to have a go at him. As I said, I respect everyone. I respect everyone's choices. I have two nostrils and one mouth. Yeah, clearly, I need clear pathway for oxygen to go through through my nose or through my mouth into my lungs that then enters the heart and pumps oxygen around the body and then as I breathe out, release car, uh, carbon dioxide. I truly believe as soon as we do that and I'm breathing against a barrier, I'm breathing probably shit air back in. The human body is a re more resilient than we realise, more resilient than the media or governments or Bill Gates is giving, uh, giving us. It's more, it's more resilient. It's a fucking, excuse my French. It's a clever piece of work. It's a, it's, it's a piece of art. It's, it's cleverly put together. Um, and we have to give ourselves as human beings more credit. I was, as a kid, I was told I need to go, you know, or when I had my daughter, you know, it was encouraged to get her to go to school early doors to pick up viruses and to pick up uh, um, bacteria and pick up, um, you know, illnesses so she builds a strong immune system. That's what all I was told by doctors and, and what you read. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. I, I can't back it up with facts, but that's what regularly told. When I went to hospital, so doctors as a child, when I went with to the doctors with an ear infection or a throat infection, like tonsillitis, they gave me antibiotics or penic penicillin. If I had a cold or a bit of flu-like symptoms, they quite often said, "No, sorry, viral, we can't give you anything. You'll have to sleep, rest well, drink plenty of fluids, i.e. water, <laughs> fruit, good food, and just sleep, and you're going to have to just get through it. Maybe pan uh, pa uh, paracetamol or some anodine, but... In general, we, the doctors generally never prescribed anything for cold or flu. So why are they so desperate to give us a vaccine? Anyway, um, yeah, 
my point really is, is you know, as I said, just this morning, my second customer in the morning has got a mask on. Can't hardly hear. Now, tomorrow, today, it's, I think it's about 27, 28 degrees in London. Tomorrow, it's going up to 32. Same as Thursday, same as Friday. 32 to 40, 34 degrees, which is about 95 to 100 degrees. What's it going to be like down on the tube when the police are standing there making sure that you've got a face mask on? Do not be surprised tomorrow people collapsing on the tube or down underground because they've got a mask on and they can't breathe properly. Just logical thinking. I'm not a doctor, not a medical student, not a physician or a lab technician, whatever, a scientist, a cab driver, with a little bit of experience as a fitness instructor and just questioning why the need to put a face mask on. As I say, us human beings, the human body is very sophisticated, well old, well manufactured, well put together, whoever created it, well done. And everything in our body has a purpose and we're far more resilient than we think we are.